Our scripture text this morning is Luke chapter 9, verses 57 to 62, which was just presented so beautifully for us in song. Let us pray. By your spirit, O oh God, we ask that you would come and find us along the road as well that we might be renewed in our vision of your holy presence, the holiness of the word made flesh in Jesus Christ. Amen. According to Luke, six verses before we get to our passage today, there came a time when Jesus set his face towards Jerusalem. From that time on, anyone who was going to follow Jesus would then be heading to Jerusalem. Now at this point, the followers don't know what's going to happen in Jerusalem. All they know is that they're not there yet. They have to keep moving. Then our passage says, as they were going along the road, someone said, someone, I love that. that, that could be anyone, it could be you and it could be me. As they were going along the road, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you anywhere. Wherever you're going, Jesus. That's where I'm going because I'm with you. And then notice how Jesus responds to this great affirmation of faith in him. He cautions. Foxes even have holes. Birds have nests. But the son of the man has no place to lay his head. Jesus never settles down. And this is why it is so frustrating to follow him. As far as we know, he never built a home. He didn't stay in Nazareth with the family business and carpentry. He didn't even have a retirement plan, which is prophetic to some of us in the room. <laughs> he just keeps moving which means that anyone who's committed to following Jesus will find that their own lives keep moving around. Even if you are called to stay where you are for now, you'll be experiencing constant change. In the previous chapter, after Jesus exercises the demons out of the Gerasene man, that man asked to follow Jesus, but he was sent back home and yet you have a sense that home has just changed dramatically for him. Have you ever had your life just right? You love your friends, your family members are all healthy, you're enjoying your work, you're a part of a great community of faith, they sing songs you like, And you're, you're just tempted to look around and say, all right, all right, this is perfect. Nobody move. Well, take a photograph, because you're going to want to remember that when Jesus blows the whistle and says, all right, everybody out of the pool, because he will insist on more movement. Now, why is that? Why is there so much change on the road behind Jesus? Why do our families and our friends and the school and the church and the nation and the world keep spinning? Why do we have to keep giving up things that are cherished in order to receive gifts that we didn't even ask for? Because that's life on the road behind Jesus to Jerusalem. 
Well, then what's so special about Jerusalem? Don't get ahead of the story. Holy Week's a long way off. At this point in the narrative, all we followers of Jesus know is that we have to keep moving. That's as far as the text goes today. And along the way, behind Jesus, we will find that he is often leading us to places that we would rather not go. We will find that he is giving us gifts and even people that we would probably rather not have in our lives. And he will certainly ask you to let go of things. Things that are heavy and are weighing you down on the journey. Things to which you are clinging too tightly. But it's all in order to get you to Jerusalem. And what happens there is not what you could possibly expect. We will discover that it is to behold all of our salvation. But Jesus cautions, just don't look back along the way or you will never complete the journey. As a pastor, I've discovered there are many reasons why people are tempted to look back along the way. Sometimes it is because the hurts of the past are just too riveting. And maybe it's a hurt that you caused. Or hurt caused by someone else that you still feel and the hurt just keeps hurting. Another reason why people are often tempted to look back is because it's a way of expressing discontent on the present tense. This was the temptation of the Hebrews in their wilderness sojourn who grow, grew weary of the hardship along the desert journey and the meagerness of the manna and who became very sentimental about their past life in Egypt. Oh, the flesh pots of Egypt, forgetting that they were slaves back there. Still another reason that we are tempted to look back is because we felt so competent and clear about who we were before we began to follow Jesus. But every day on the road behind Jesus is another day of humility and mystery. I tell this to the students in my class all the time. People prefer the misery they know to the mystery they do not. Now that's not logical. Logically, mystery beats misery, but people are not logical about their misery. In fact, they befriend it. There are many reasons to look back. In our text today, one person just wanted to bury a father. Another just wanted to say goodbye to family. And Jesus' response to both of them is so severe. Let the dead bury the dead. Put your hand to the plow and do not look back. No, I do not think that Jesus is telling us we cannot grieve our hurts or remember our past. No one ever gets over the death of a cherished family member. And our hurts never heal unless we acknowledge them. And certainly we cannot learn faith without remembering God's past faithfulness. Our lives are shaped by our heartaches and our joys. And to ignore them is to ignore ourselves. 
But at least here, Jesus is saying, that's not where your life is going to be found. Your life is found not in what is behind you. And not actually even in your expectations of what will happen in Jerusalem. For now, your life is found on the road following Jesus through all the changes that entails. Now it is hard to flourish on a road that leads through so much change unless, unless you can clearly see Jesus along the way. This is why we study theology in community. It's why we are centered in worship, why we honor, honor seasons like Lent and read Lenten devotionals. This is why we put our hand to the plow and do not look back. It's why we commit ourselves to the work of justice, to reaching out to those around us with compassion and care. This is why we respond to the horrific invasion of the Ukraine and another, another humanitarian crisis with fervent prayer. It, it's all a way of seeing Jesus. And you have to keep your eyes on Jesus or you will never make it to Jerusalem. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.